A little known fact is that Japan's massive 2011 tsunami almost destroyed a very expensive research ship that later came very close to becoming the first machine to drill through Earth's crust. Here are the details. Nature magazine reports that Japan's Chikyu's research vessel drilled the deepest undersea hole ever drilled by a research ship. The massive ship cost $526 million to build and achieved its drilling record only a year after being badly damaged by the massive Japanese tsunami of 2011. It is the first research ship to feature a massive tower that resembles a super long pipe known as a riser, which envelops the main drill pipe. This riser technology is usually found on oil rigs and makes an undersea drill system much more stable, enabling the Chikyu to drill much deeper than normal research vessels. The ship set out to drill through a very thin part of the Earth's crust, south of the city of Hamamatsu. The plan was to drop the Chikyu drill and riser pipes through 6 kilometers of ocean before drilling up to 5,200 meters into the sea floor. This should have been enough to make it the first vessel to drill through Earth's hard crust and reach the softer mantle layer. Unfortunately, the drilling had to stop after 3,250 meters because the drill hole kept collapsing. In the end, the Chikyu did set a drill record but also proved how incredibly hard it would be for humans to drill through Earth's crust and study Earth's mantle. The world's busiest shipping channel, Egypt's Suez Canal, has been completely blocked by a huge container ship that ran aground after losing control, causing a long traffic jam of cargo ships in the region. The BBC reports that the tugboats and a digger have been deployed to help shift the 400-meter-long ship called the Ever Given, but there are fears it could remain trapped for many days. The incident occurred just north of the port of Suez early on Tuesday, March 23rd. The ship is lodged sideways across the waterway blocking the path of dozens of other vessels which are now trapped in lines in both directions. The ship's owners said they suspect the ship was pushed by a sudden strong wind, causing it to hit the side and run aground. Incidents such as this are rare, but could have huge ramifications for global trade. If canal personnel are unable to pull the ship free in a high tide, they would have to start removing cargo, which would be a very difficult task in the middle of the desert. The BBC reports that the Ever Given container ship has been successfully refloated after being stranded in the Suez Canal for almost a week. This after an around-the-clock international effort to dislodge the massive vessel and reopen the vital shipping lane. The intense salvage effort has focused on dredging sand from below the front and rear of the ship while also pulling the ship with tugboats. Canal authorities said the container ship began to float successfully on Monday after finally responding to the pulling maneuvers of a number of tugboats. Workers managed to free the rear part of the ship first, swinging the stern into the canal, while the bow was still stuck in the sloping sand that forms the side of the canal. At that stage, tugboats were used to make sure a gust of wind and currents did not push the stern back into the bank while workers were still working to free the bow. The six-day blockage cost Egypt an estimated $14 million per day. Shocking images show a massive Venezuelan oil tanker tilting dangerously near the island of Trinidad and the West Indies. According to CBS News, the giant ship is carrying more than 300 million liters of oil and is anchored in the Gulf of Paria, a gulf only around 100 kilometers across between Venezuela and the country of Trinidad and Tobago. The Venezuelan tanker has been parked in the Gulf for nearly two years, carrying around 1.3 million barrels of oil. That's about five times the amount of oil that the Exxon Valdez famously spilled in 1989. Environmentalists and scientists are extremely concerned that a storm at sea could cause the oil in the unstable ship to slosh around. Such a situation could cause the ship to flip over, which would lead to an oil spill much bigger than the disastrous Exxon Valdez oil spill. If this happens, the entire region will be covered in sticky oil for decades, causing a massive ecological disaster and destroying the unique beauty of the area. Last month's oil spill in Mauritius could end up ruining one of the last great hotspots of marine biodiversity left on Earth. Now, an investigation suggests it happened because someone on the ship wanted to get within cell phone range of the island for a birthday celebration, among other damning details. Here's what we know so far. The Panama Maritime Authority has officially joined the investigation of the final voyage of the MV Wakashio. The Wakashio ran aground on a coral reef in July and broke apart in mid-August, spilling 1,000 tons of oil. 
it was the worst environmental disaster in the history of Mauritius. Mauritius is a small and poor island state in the Indian Ocean. It depends on fish, corals, and marine wildlife for food and tourism for its economy. The accident happened at Point Desney, a coral reef that lies near a marine park and is listed under the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands of International Importance. The Wakashio entered the Indian Ocean on July 16th. The Panamanian flagged Japanese-owned bulk carrier adjusted course on July 21st. The ship then entered Mauritius's exclusive economic zone on July 23rd. On July 25th, it changed course again and collided with the reef off the coast of Mauritius at 7.15 p.m. The Panama Maritime Authority confirmed revelations first reported by local newspaper L'Express. The Wakashio made a course change to get within five miles of Mauritius to pick up a cell phone signal for a crew member's birthday celebration. The investigation also found that the chart displayed on the Wakashio's electronic chart display and information system was the wrong chart and the wrong scale. This made it impossible to properly verify the approach of the coast and shallower waters. Mauritian waters are home to 1,700 species, according to the UN Convention on Biological Diversity. Speaking to the BBC, Karina Chokan, a senior lecturer in marine biology at the University of Brighton, said there are very few such marine areas with such rich biodiversity left on the planet. An oil spill like this will impact almost everything there. Sunil Kumar Nandeshwar, the captain of the Japanese ship, was arrested last month and charged with unlawful interference with the operation of a property of a ship that resulted in unsafe navigation. The 58-year-old Indian national faces 60 years in jail if found guilty. Stay tuned to Tomo News for more on this terrible accident. If you missed our previous coverage, you can watch it here now. An oil spill in the seas near Mauritius is so large that it can be seen from space. Here is what we know so far. Reuters reports Mauritius has declared a state of emergency after a stricken tanker began spilling tons of fuel, causing an ecological disaster among the reefs to the southeast of the island nation. The Panamanian flagged bulk carrier Wakashio is owned by Japan-based Okio Marine, an affiliate of Nagashiki Shipping. According to the Washington Post, the ship struck the reefs on July 25th and has leaked more than 1,000 tons of oil. India-based news site The Saddle reports that the 300-meter-long Wakashio carried 3,800 tons of bunker fuel, 200 tons of diesel, and 90 tons of lubricants. According to Al Jazeera, Mauritius fears the ship could break up completely and release all its cargo. Al Jazeera reports oil sludge could be seen seeping into the ocean and white sand beaches, which threatens the fish, coral, and marine wildlife that Mauritius depends on for its economy. Once again, 2020 hits the ball right out of the park. Perhaps now is a good time to brush up these woodsy skills you have always fantasized about. Supposing, of course, that there will be a wilderness for us to run to at the end of all this. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.